In this video, we're going to take you through a full beginner's guide to Uphold, showing you how to buy, swap, send and receive, and then finally how to sell and withdraw your crypto to a bank account. And there'll be a timeline in the video description so you can jump to specific parts of this video if you wish. For more information on Uphold, please check out everybithelps.io. First up, a little bit about Uphold. Uphold stands out by offering a unique platform where you can seamlessly trade between cryptocurrencies, traditional currencies and precious metals. It's not just about trading, it's about creating a financial space where you're in control, without needing to juggle multiple accounts and wallets. With Uphold, you can convert your money into 30 currencies, including cryptocurrencies and precious metals, all within just a few taps. And there's no hidden fees. Uphold prides itself on its transparency, ensuring you know exactly what you're paying for. And they make it incredibly easy for you to move your traditional currencies to cryptocurrencies and back, catering for even those first getting into crypto. Some assets in Uphold can also earn you interest, making your money work for you even when you're not actively trading. So whether you're looking to diversify your portfolio with precious metals, dip your toes into the cryptocurrency market, or simply want a more transparent and versatile platform for your digital finance needs, Uphold is here to elevate your experience. So let's jump in. And just before we do, it is worth mentioning that the assets and services that you can use with Uphold will depend on your location, as some locations may restrict the trading of the likes of precious metals and US equities. And staking services aren't also available worldwide. Uphold is available as a mobile app for iOS and Android or as a web platform. For the purposes of this tutorial, we'll be showing the web platform. So let's jump into the walkthrough. To get started, you'll need to sign up or log into your account. And if you don't already have an Uphold account, I'll put my link in the summary below. Now, because Uphold is regulated, you're going to need to provide KYC, which is also known as Know Your Customer. This means that you need to enter in your personal information, such as your name, date of birth and your telephone number. Plus, you're also going to need to verify your identity for actions such as withdrawing or sending funds. Then once you've either signed up or logged in, you're going to reach the portfolio page. But before we start taking a look around the different pages and what we can do with Uphold, the first place that we'd recommend starting before you start depositing funds or assets into any type of platform is to secure it. So let's go to the navigation bar on the left-hand side of the screen. Then at the bottom is an icon that looks like three dots, which is for more. Then choose security. And this is where you can choose your authentication method. I personally use an authentication app and that gives me a one-time code for actions such as logging into my account. Once your account is secure, let's head back to the Portfolio tab, which again is on the left-hand side of the screen on that navigation bar, and it looks like a graph icon. And the icon highlighted in green will be the screen that's currently active. So first of all, we're going to find any notifications in the top left-hand side of the screen, and they sometimes also announce new coins here too. Underneath, there's a watch list, where you can track different asset prices. When you click onto one of these tradable assets, you can mark them as a favorite by clicking on the star and you'll see the coin's price, change, volume further down, and then news and a little bit about that specific crypto. If we click on the X icon in the top left, it then takes us back to the watch list and underneath is any recent activity within your account. In the center of the screen is where we can then track our portfolio and view our total balance. And then we'll see our balances per asset underneath. As you can see, this is an existing account for me. So I do have some crypto and active balances already in here to show you. On the right is the trading section where you can trade anything to anything. And this is where we're gonna be mostly concentrating today. First, we're gonna look under the transact tab at the top of the screen. And underneath, if we choose source, a drop down will then display, and this is where you'll see all the different tradable assets. And these are categorized and can be filtered by my accounts, my cards, my banks, and crypto networks. Now, if you don't already have any crypto and you want to buy some within Uphold, you can do this with fiat currencies using a bank account or a bank card. To add a bank account, click on the plus icon to the right of my banks, then choose the bank currency which will vary depending on your location. I've got the option of euros or pounds sterling. If I just select pounds sterling, you'll then see the payment or the bank details where you need to send your funds to. 
and you'll need to ensure that the deposit is from a bank account in the same name as your uphold one. As you can see, any funds that I deposit will go into my GBP card. And you can deposit or transfer funds with zero fees from your bank. Plus, you can also use this account to withdraw to later. Once you've made your transfer, you'll then find it within your GBP card, which you can locate from your portfolio when you scroll down. You'll then see under National Currencies, I've got a GBP card showing up with £100. If you'd rather deposit funds with a bank card instead, select Source, choose My Cards, then click the plus icon to link a Visa or MasterCard. And then you simply add in your card details into here and then choose to add card from the bottom. So now that we have some GBP in our account, we can then buy crypto with it. To buy crypto with a national currency like GBP, choose the GBP card from the source dropdown. Then from the destination dropdown, select what you'd like to buy. And the items that you can trade your GBP for are categorized by cryptocurrencies, utility tokens, national currencies, networks and stable coins. And if you're in a different location, you may also see precious metals or US equities in here too. In this example, I'm going to choose to trade my GBP for Bitcoin. In other words, I want to buy Bitcoin with my GBP. And you can then categorize or store your crypto within different accounts. I'm going to create a new one now where my Bitcoin will go into once I've bought it. We then need to enter in the amount that we'd like to spend. Or you can choose a percentage of your GBP portfolio from the predefined options below. And it will show you the Bitcoin buy price underneath. There's then an option to repeat the transaction or schedule, plus ways that you can take profit from your trade or set trailing stops if BTC were to drop to a certain price. And this can help to reduce losses. Then if we preview our trade, it will then show a summary of our trade, showing you the current market rate price and any trading fees that apply. As it states here, if I was to trade over £398.64p, I can avoid these fees. So trades over $500 are essentially fee-free, and there's some other exceptions in here too. And it then shows me the total transfer amount minus the fee. When you're happy, you can confirm your trade. And the Bitcoin that we've just traded for with our GBP will then appear under your portfolio within the account that you've either created or chosen. And depending on your location, as I said at the very start, you could trade your national currency with not just Bitcoin or crypto, but you can also purchase metals like gold or silver or US equities. Or you could trade it for another cryptocurrency. Plus, you can also convert crypto to crypto. So if you want to try your hand at another crypto, you can select it from the source. In this example, we'll choose my Bitcoin account from under my accounts. And in the destination, I'd like to trade this for Ethereum, and you can also search for this from the top. Then enter the amount, and then preview your trade. And again, you'll see a preview of your trade, as well as the market rate for BTC to ETH, plus the fee that you're going to be paying. When you're happy, you can then go ahead and confirm your trade. You can also trade your crypto back to your GBP card to effectively cash out, which we're going to show you a little bit later. So if you have crypto in a wallet or over another exchange, and you essentially want to send it to Uphold, you're first going to need your wallet address to send it to. And there's two different ways that you can locate your address, depending on if you're already holding this crypto in Uphold or not. So if this is a new crypto that you're receiving, to find your wallet address, from the source dropdown, go to the Crypto Networks category, and select the cryptocurrency that you need the wallet address for. So if you plan to receive Bitcoin, for example, select Bitcoin from the list. As you can see, Bitcoin can only be transferred on the Bitcoin network. And the reason that they state this is because some cryptocurrencies can be transferred on multiple networks or blockchains. If this is the case, you will have the options available. And we're going to come back to this shortly with another example. If you already have an account, you can choose this from the drop down too. When you show address, it then gives you a warning about networks which you need to confirm you understand. Your Uphold wallet address for Bitcoin will then be displayed on the screen, along with a QR code which can be useful if you're doing transactions through mobile devices. Underneath this, there's an option to copy the address directly to your clipboard, but just make sure that you do copy it accurately. And if you're already holding the token within Uphold, you can find your wallet address by heading to your portfolio, 
selecting the crypto you want to find the wallet address for, and the account if you have one. Then click on the icon in the top right, which is three dots, and choose wallet address. And again, the QR code and the address will then be displayed. Now, if you want to find your wallet address for any other type of cryptocurrency or stablecoin, head back to anything to anything. Again, from the drop down source, choose the cryptocurrency from the crypto networks category. And this time, I'll show you Ethereum, which, as it states here, has multiple networks available. So this time, we need to select a transfer network. And it's important to choose the correct network and check which network you're sending your tokens on, as sending assets through the wrong network can result in loss. And with Uphold, you can transfer Ethereum on the Ethereum network, Arbitrum 1 network, or Optimism network. And again, your address and QR code will then be displayed for that specific crypto and the network. Now, if you've already purchased crypto on Uphold, or if you've exchanged it to another crypto, it's worth mentioning that similar to other trading platforms, such as the likes of Coinbase or Binance, which I've got separate tutorials for, you won't actually have access to your private keys. Therefore, you're entrusting a third party and you've got less control over your funds. So if you wanted to send these to an external wallet, such as a hardware wallet like a Ledger or a Trezor, where you do have control over your crypto and access to your private keys, then you can do so by selecting the token that you'd like to withdraw from your portfolio. So how do you send your funds outside of Uphold? Well, from the source, choose the crypto you'd like to send from your accounts. Then under Destination, choose the Bitcoin network from the crypto networks and enter in the amount that you'd like to send. Then preview your withdrawal. In here is where you can enter the address of where you're going to be sending your crypto to. And this might be your receive address from your hardware wallet or a deposit address if you're sending your crypto to another exchange or another platform. When you confirm, you'll then see that Uphold starts to check the recipient information because regulations require them to collect recipient details. And it'll ask if you own the account, if you're sending to an individual or a company, and the type of destination too. Then enter the wallet provider name and continue. You'll then see the preview, which includes the address and the network fee. Now, for any transaction to take place on the blockchain or the network, there is a fee involved, and the fee will increase during peak times. You may therefore need to wait for congestion to go down and find times when the fees are lower. Unfortunately, the fee is just too much for me to continue with this transaction at this moment in time, so I won't go ahead with confirming my withdrawal. Next, we're going to take a look at how to withdraw your crypto to a bank account. There's a couple of different ways that you can sell or trade this. First, I'm going to show you more of an instant swap. And we're going to need to make sure we're under the Transact tab under Anything to Anything. Then in the Source field, choose the crypto you want to sell. And in this example, I'm going to choose my Bitcoin account. Then state what you'd like to swap that for. In this case, I'd like to trade this directly into my GBP bank account and essentially cash out. Then enter the amount that you'd like to trade. And if we preview our withdrawal now, it'll give us a summary of our transaction, their market rate, i.e. the price you're selling your Bitcoin at, and the fee. And when you're happy, you can confirm the trade. And the withdrawal transaction will appear under your activity, which you can select from the left-hand side of the screen under the portfolio icon. And this will give you more details in regards to your transaction. But what if you're not in that much of a hurry and you want to wait for the market to reach a certain price point before you go ahead and sell your Bitcoin? Well, in that case, you create something called a limit order. So under anything to anything now, let's choose the limit tab at the top of the screen this time. Then I need to choose the asset that I'm trading from, and that's going to be my Bitcoin account. Then enter the amount in Bitcoin that I'd like to sell or trade, and choose to click to sell. You'll then be asked to enter in a target price. And this is where I can dictate the price when I'd like to sell my Bitcoin. So over on the far left hand side of the screen at the moment, I can see the current price of Bitcoin is roughly around £53,000. So I can state here that if Bitcoin were to reach £54,000, then I'd like to convert or sell my Bitcoin. And in this way, hopefully I'd make a bit of profit. And I'd like to convert that to my GBP bank account. And you can obviously choose what you'd like to convert your crypto into. It'll also let me know the estimated amount of how much I'm going to get at this price. 
It then states this is good till cancelled, which means that the order will remain on the order until it's filled or until I cancel it. You can set specific time limits in here too. If we now preview, it then shows our breakdown. And when we're happy, we can confirm the limit order. You can also manage these limit orders by clicking on the icon here. Or you can also find this option under your activity in the far left. And then the limit tab at the top. And here is where you can view any active limit orders. So if, for example, you wanted to cancel your limit order before it's been executed, you can cancel it from here. And in this way, if you've made a mistake or if the market changes dramatically in the wrong direction, you can click cancel in the top right and then confirm to cancel, which as you can see is now ended. Also under the activity view, this just displays a list of your activities. And you can generate a report from here, which will send you an email with a list of all the transaction history. When you select markets from the left hand side of the screen, there's a list of each different type of market available and you can search at the top and again view information about each asset. Then you have your integrations, where you can choose to link your wallet to any of the third party apps below. I've got mine linked to Brave Rewards, but there's also some ways that you can earn crypto and create crypto tax reporting with Cointracker, which we actually have a full tutorial for. Under more is where we set up our security earlier, but we can also edit our profile, set up some preferences, and amend any linked accounts, which includes your cards and banks. But that was our overview of the Uphold web platform. And I hope you enjoyed this video today. And if you did, then please give me a like, hit the subscribe button, and please do head over to our website at everybithelps.io for more tips, reviews, and step-by-step -step guides. Thanks, and I'll see you soon.